turn your mic on. I'm Dr. Philip Landrigan. I'm professor and chairman of the Department of Community and Preventive Medicine at the Mount Sinai School of Medicine in New York City. As you said in your introductory remarks, it's our department that has major responsibility for directing the medical programs that are providing diagnosis and treatment to Mr. Cordero and many thousands of other of the men and women who responded in 9, on 9-11 and in the days and weeks that followed. The, the workforce that responded to 9-11 was, was a very, very diverse workforce. It included uh, people who were trained in response, firefighters, police, paramedics, and the National Guard. It also included construction workers, transit workers, sanitation workers, uh, workers like Mr. Cordero from the Board of Education, volunteers. People came from across the country. They came from New York, New Jersey, and southern New England, but they also came from the Midwest. They came from California. They came, in fact, from every state in the Union, and there are people from every state in the Union who are currently registered in the various network of medical programs that the federal government has established since 9-11. The mix of chemicals that these workers and volunteers were exposed to was very complex. Two-thirds of the mass of the dust w consisted of pulverized concrete. Pulverized concrete is a very nasty substance. It has a pH of between 10 and 11, which makes it very alkaline, very caustic. It sears the upper and lower respiratory tract when it's inhaled, and it sears the esophagus when, when, uh, when it's swallowed. Uh, also, there were millions of microscopic shards of glass. There was asbestos. There was dioxin. There were polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. The first couple of days when there was still unburned jet fuel at the site, there were organic solvents, most notably benzene. Concentrations were very high, and the mixture of chemicals is a mix that's never previously been encountered. Our doctors at Mount Sinai and at some of our sister institutions around New York and New Jersey began to realize within a matter of days that we were going to be seeing people with illnesses and injuries from their work at the World Trade Center site. And indeed, on September 13, 2001, just two days after the attack, a group of our doctors convened uh, at uh, the home of one of the docs to begin to plan our strategy. And in the fall of 2001, we first began to see patients. Uh, we did that initially using our own resources and some funds that we, had, uh, that we had on a standing basis from the New York State Department of Health, state legislature. Uh, federal funds through NIOSH first became available in the late spring of 2002. Uh, NIOSH funds for monitoring and screening of workers have continued from 2002 to the present. We, uh, we also have a treatment program. It was stood up initially in 2003 with private philanthropy. Uh, federal money through NIOSH has come on stream to support the treatment program since a year ago, since um, September of 2006. To date, we have seen 21,000 of the men and women who responded to 9-11. Uh, those 21,000 have been seen in a consortium of uh, uh, institutions in the greater New York area uh, that's based at Mount Sinai, and, and at Mount Sinai we've seen approximately 80 percent of this, of this total number. Uh, actually, another 8,000 of these responders have come back for a second visit, and now a smaller number are beginning in the last few months to come back for a third visit. The, we have seen a range of adverse health effects in these workers, which basically involve three organ systems, the respiratory tract, the gastrointestinal tract, and mental health. The respiratory problems, which are undoubtedly the consequence of the inhalation of this toxic dust that I just described. And first of all, 46 percent of the workers have new symptoms, symptoms that didn't exist on September 10, 2001, involving their lungs, their bronchi, their lower respiratory tract. This is mainly cough, shortness of breath, new cases of asthma. 62 uh, percent have symptoms involving the upper respiratory tract, uh, uh, very intense uh, nasal irritation and sinusitis. Uh, and in the aggregate, putting those two together, 68.8 percent have either upper or lower uh, respiratory uh, problems. There are also mental health problems. We published these, these findings in um, September 2006 in Environmental Health Perspectives, peer-reviewed medical journal published by the National Institutes of Health. In addition to those symptoms, workers also had objectively documented abnormalities of pulmonary function. When we did breathing tests, 
we found that five times, five, uh, five times more uh, responders had restrictive lung disease than would be expected uh, in the general American population. I should note that our findings were very, very similar to findings that have been documented in two other independent studies, that which is done by the Fire Department of New York, and that which has been done through the New York City Registry by the New York City Department of Health. All have found upper and lower respiratory problems, uh, GI problems, and, and mental health problems. Conclude by saying that the future is uncertain for the health of the responders. And there are fundamentally two categories of question. The first question is, will the illnesses that we're now seeing in the workers persist? Will it get worse? Will they abate? We don't know. Only continued follow-up in properly established centers of excellence is going to answer that question. And the second big unanswered question is, what about new illnesses? Will diseases uh, of long latency emerge in future years as more time passes, as the chemicals that these workers inhale have time to interact within their bodies and react with their cells and with their DNA. We don't know the answer to that question either. And the only way we're going to resolve that question is, again, through continued meticulous monitoring of the health of these brave men and women through properly established centers of excellence. Thanks very much.